Gentrification, speculation, greenwash, sustainability, facadism, pops, nymphs. These terminologies are quite often used in a daily basis, but they are so mysterious. Today, we have decided to strip down these terminologies and explain it to you. Let's go. Last week, we were exploring a new development in Brussels. On the other side, we have heard some people shouting, Gentrifiers! Gentrifiers! What the heck is that? Gentrification is super common urban phenomena that happens due to the economic character of the real estate. According to the most common definition, gentrification is a process whereby the character of a poor urban area is changed by wealthier people moving in, typically displacing current inhabitants in the process. Some people who are defending this process would like to say that gentrification is also a process of making an area more gentle, meaning opposite of rough. However, for us it is crucial to remember the following. Gentrification always goes in the benefit of the financially stable social groups. Financially stable social groups have more options for obtaining properties, while socially vulnerable groups have very limited potentials. Gentrification is not helping the stable social groups, as it is harming the vulnerable social groups. Finally, don't try to understand and defend gentrification in a reductive way. Gentrification is almost always part of higher socio-political frame that comes in long periods of time, surpassing the human lifespan and hacking the misfortune of the most vulnerable ones. On the way home, there is a giant spot of land with an empty building laying down there since a couple of years without anything happening around. One day, I met one of the neighbors and I asked, what is going on in this place? Their answer was, they are speculating on real estate. And I said, what? Speculation in real estate? What does that mean? This is the most common definition of real estate speculation. Real estate speculation is the practice under which housing is primarily treated as a market investment, one to be bought, sold and flipped in order to maximize profits. Well, this definition may sound abstract, but here we will give a brief explanation. Wealthy people or different corporate organizations almost always think on long-term time spans, periods of time that for the regular individuals are not relevant. Throughout the time, the inflation rate is constantly rising due to the demand pool inflation, meaning constant rise of the value for items that are constantly demanded. In other words, same item costs more in future than it costs in the moment of speaking. This happens to the still very appreciated item land. To make this phenomena even more clear, we will show you this story. Bill is a very rich man, therefore he is not in a rush to build or buy stuff, but he has to do something with the money, because if he doesn't spend them, they will lose the value. Bill decides to buy this piece of land in the middle of the city, a prime location for 1 euro. He buys the land and he wants to start building later, so he can wait for a more beneficial economical context. However, the town is pressuring Bill to start building sooner, because this primary location of land cannot stay neglected for years, right? Citizens are getting pissed because the center of the city looks abandoned. Then Bill starts to propose unrealistic plans that for sure will not pass the permit phase. Bill does anything possible with the purpose of prolonging the building phase. He may even pay fines, but it is still nothing comparing to what he is earning. Finally, after a long 15 years of negotiations, Bill will start to build and invest. The town hall also lost so much that they accepted the Bill's crazy conditions, proposals and implementation plans. The town administration is doing literally anything possible with the purpose of initiating the construction and finally charge some revenue for the city budget. What Bill did was speculating with the real estate. Though officially he was probing building scenarios that will be the best for the city, in fact he was putting off the construction phase for his benefits. Finally, if Bill didn't get what he wanted, he would have sold the location for way much more money than he originally spent for buying the location. Ok, maybe not Bill, but his daughter, son or wife. As a big investor, I have submitted a building permit in Brussels. The authorities called me back by saying, wait, your project is missing some greenery. I answered, 
if I had a couple of trees, are we cool? And they answered, yes, of course. And I got the permit. So this is what we call green wash. Green wash happens very often, especially today because being eco-friendly is cool. Green wash is generally understood as promotion and exposure only of the beneficial sides of some project and putting in shadow all the negatives. With the help of an active mainstream media campaign, this process is quite successful because simply hearing one lie for hundreds of times, it becomes truth. To illustrate this phenomenon, we will briefly show this case. This building is glorified for its water recuperation systems and energy efficient facade. But no one talks how much pollution was emitted in demolishing the previous building, digging the soil and dragging the materials from other countries. On the end of the day, this building might not be that big of a deal, but no one talked about the negatives, only the advantages were pitched to the maximum. Gentrification, facadism, greenwash and the list goes on. They are very complex terminologies, predominant in our daily life, but they are very difficult to explain to regular citizens. That's a big problem. Thanks for gentrifying the city and don't forget to speculate in real estate. Keep the front facade and properly greenwash your building. Don't forget to watch, subscribe and like, of course comment. And see you next time.